Welcome guys to a new episode of uh, Public Service Series. I'm Enrique and today we're going to be talking about the lower unit slash drive. Uh, in the garage, in your shop, you get a motor with 50 hours, 100 hours, 500 hours. This is what it's going to look like. So um, I already went ahead on, on a different video. You can click below. There is there is an explanation how to remove the sprocket. So I went ahead and removed this part just to save a little bit of time. And uh, now I'm going to remove this piece and slowly. These are really easy to remove. They are never stuck. They, they get a little bit of rust, but uh, really you just have to tap them a couple of times and they come out really easy. I'm going to go ahead and remove the back, the rear cap, the seal cap. This is kind of a this is kind of a crazy tool, and you guys can use a pipe wrench or whatever. But um, this is just a tube that we welded a couple of plates on, on the ends, and it just fits perfect right here. Now remember, there's 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 something something to remember. This is a left-handed thread, so. Uh, it's not lefty loosey or righty tight. I have done a few of this in the past where this is really, really stuck. The only thing you have to do is just grab a torch and uh, just heat up a, um, for a couple of minutes. Just heat up the um, the collar. Don't heat up the, the the cap. Heat up the collar so you can loosen this glue. Now let's go in the front. So right here up front, you have you have the bushing, you have the snap ring or retaining ring. Go ahead and remove this snap ring first the shaft is actually positioned it's it's held in place by two things the rear bearings and this bushing right here um, the way you remove it it's it's by hitting it and it's gonna come out towards the back towards the front of the shaft is gonna slide that way now there is, here is a, a trick and be very careful because you don't want to mushroom the shaft. If you mushroom the shaft, two things, well, everything you're gonna have to replace it, but two things, it's gonna be very, very hard for you to, to, to get it out, and it's your, um, your sprocket is not gonna go in anymore. Um, it's not gonna, uh, this pushing is just not gonna fit. So, what do we do? I actually have a brass hammer, softer, than the shaft so it, it, not, it won't mushroom it or what I have here is just a piece of stock with a regular mallet. Um, before I do this I have to think of safety first. One thing's flying on your in your eyes. Okay so Flush with this bushing. I'm gonna grab a different tool. So we can either grab a, a punch or a bolt, whatever you have handy. Um, this is a little trick here because you don't want it moving. But also don't want to hit your hand. Okay, so that's out. Pushing is right here. And I put it 
with my used part. Okay. And uh, if you guys noticed, here's the shaft. Stinky. Old bearings. Old pushing. This, this is a tricky part. I'm gonna remove that thing from the side. Um, you will need about a lot of rags, paper towels, just so you don't make mess. I normally don't mind getting my hands dirty, but this is not just greasy, this is actually stinky. You have to make sure it's really, really tight. Okay, so in a perfect, perfect world, um, this would just come out really easy. It'll be just unscrew it, and that's it. Um, no, nothing is ever easy. The first thing that we want to do, just to remove all the all the grime, dirt, grease, whatever it could be in here, and um, I don't know if you can you can get the camera a little closer. In between the shaft and the bushing, right here, we want to remove what's inside here because that is going to get on the thread. As you can see, these threads are very, very fine. How are you gonna remove these, uh, the grease and everything? That's really simple. You can just squirt a little bit of a penetrating oil or WP-40. That's gonna kind of like loosen everything up. And then just grab your air nozzle, your uh, compressed air, and then just blow it all out. Do it a couple of times, just make sure because you really don't want anything in there. It's happened a couple of times before when this gets, it sees in there. It's pretty much welded on, the, on those threads. And on the, on the best case scenario, you just have to cut it with a, with a cutting wheel and then you get it out. In the worst case scenario, you end up replacing the whole shaft. And um, I don't think you guys are wanna, gonna wanna do that if you don't have to. Okay, we're gonna apply a little bit of heat. And this is just going to break the Loctite, we use a high strength. Um, I believe the Loctite that we use is the uh, six, 609, is the high strength oil resistant. So, this thing is very, very well in there.
gonna hit it a couple of times just again to break the lock lock tight. just like that so uh, another trick right here you guys you're gonna be losing this up if you feel like the threads are starting getting dirty that you start start getting tight or whatever just back it back in just put it back in then like go back and then blow it again don't be afraid of squirting more WD-40 hot here we go and uh, these are pretty deep grooves this motor I believe it had about 270 hours I believe you can see the grooves in here they come out towards the prop as well. There is a lot of different ways you guys can do this. So just put it right here, sit it on the on the vise. I don't have that much room since I'm already hitting on that table. soft mallet you don't want to mush from this shaft um, what to look for on a, on a shaft um, obviously the, um, it has to be straight maybe once you guys have it out here uh, grab a straight edge make sure that it's dead on it's straight you don't want any vibration or anything um, any damage right here obviously the bearings the bearings I believe they go so this part right here is where your bushing goes bearings bushing and then the bushing for the sprocket um, you can see right here where the seal rides but um, as long as you don't have any damage in that part where the seal rides you, you should be good uh, that back side what you're looking for again the bearings they haven't spun this is pretty good and these threads and obviously the threads for where the prop nut is this shaft looks pretty pretty good for considering the edge the age so i'm just gonna go ahead and clean it up and reuse it
back to the lower unit housing. We haven't removed the seal or the bearings in there. We can use the same shaft, just slide back in. This is gonna be a little messy because there is still grease in there. We have grease coming out. So, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I, the side of the shaft that I used was the front side. Uh, don't use this side, because this is, this is probably gonna go in the inner diameter in the bearings and it's gonna get stuck. So, try to remove as much grease as you can. Now the next step is we want to get all the old grease out. You can use a, a rag, an old rag. I like to start with just paper towels. Drive shaft as a tool. Get your garbage can. That's where everything's gonna fall. just one more time to make sure the same way we clean this part we're gonna clean the back So you have to do we have the shot the raw shaft it's right here like I said make sure that there is no severe scratching so the seal doesn't get ruined right away if you want to um, you can have a little bit of a you can grab a piece of a scotch sprite can of paper and then just clean it up pretty good both ends um, and then I'm gonna show you how to put it all back in okay so we removed it, cleaned it all up. Now, reassembly. We are going to start with the shaft. Okay, so depending on what you guys order from uh, our friends at Backwater Performance, if, um, if you got the whole kit or just specific parts, I'm just gonna go through the whole thing just to make sure that I don't skip any steps or anything. Um, we are going to, actually I'm gonna turn it around. I'm gonna start with the bearings in the back. So prop side. You guys wanna make sure there is no grease, no dirt. So if you guys have some uh, carb cleaner, paint thinner, anything that will remove your anything greasy so we don't so we make sure the log type actually holds it in place. Okay. So as you guys can see I have not opened these bearings. We don't want any any dirt or anything getting into these things. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we use the 609 Loctite. 
this thing you can get it at I've seen it at a auto parts store, little tiny things. It's, it's actually pretty pricey. This is actually doing two things. It's going to lubricate it, and when it dries, it'll hold it in place. Now, here at the factory, what we do, we, we have a special machine that heats up the, the inner part, the inner race. It heats it up, it grows, and then this literally just lights up and down, freely. But again, I'm not using any of that because I know 99% of us, we don't have that machine at home. So by doing this, you want to make sure you are, you're hitting the inner race. Okay, so I don't know if you can see how far I went in about a quarter inch past the threads now if you don't have this tool or a piece of pipe or uh, something that you can hit the inner race with we're gonna do the same as I did before what you can do the bearings just sitting on sit them on this make sure making sure that everything is sitting straight you, you're gonna have to get a stool or get something that you can hit the shaft push it in and the same make sure that it goes about a quarter inch past the threads now here's a good part And we want to make sure there is no debris, no dirt in those threads. We're going to use the new, new bushing, cleaning these threads. The rock type, I'm going to put it in the, in the threads. Right there. This is a right hand thread, so you don't have to worry about anything. Now here, we don't we don't want to use any kind of vice grip or pipe wrench or anything. This thing is, I want to say it's probably ten dollars at Home Depot. This is where I got this. It's just a strap, a leather strap or. I don't know what you want to call it but really on this you don't need that much torque about that that's good the Loctite will do the rest of the job now you remember I put I actually shoved the bearings full reach past the threads right well now we're gonna we're gonna move it back towards the bushing is you want you want the inner race hitting the bushing so that this quarter inch gap is gonna go away soft mallet This is spinning perfectly. You don't feel anything. There is nothing crunchy. Now again, just to make sure, I'm just gonna blow it one more time, make sure that there is no grease. I mean, no dirt, no debris, or that it could have fallen from the mallet or anything.
remember this this bushing right here is where um, where the seals on your seal cap is gonna ride. So you're gonna have three seals riding on here. Perfect. We put this aside for now. All right. So now, now that we did this, we're gonna go ahead and put it into the housing. notice I use a lot of uh, solvent you call it acetone in this case I'm using acetone you have to um, kind of want to wear gloves when it comes to that it's really really corrosive well maybe not corrosive but it really dries your skin really bad when you put the uh, first time you put the bearings the shaft and the bearing assembly you probably want a tiny bit of grease just to make sure it slides easy I don't like putting any kind of stress on these bearings and this is very I mean just to state the obvious, you know what side goes in first. You don't have to hit it or anything, just like that. Depending on the parts that you guys order from from BPS, in this case I have the whole assembly, the whole seal cap assembly. You got three you you guys may get uh probably got just the three seals and have to get them out replace them make sure there is no dirt or anything this part this grease i'm using is just mercury grease This, I'm just greasing all the, uh, the seals, the lid. For the threads, because you don't want them, you don't want those threads leaking water in or grease out. I'm actually using the uh, gasket dressing, aviation gasket, or There's a lot of names on this thing. Whatever you guys call it, it works very good. Now, normally right here at the factory, we don't put this until the end. Now I'm gonna put it on right now because I need to. I need a way for me um, for the, this shaft to stay in place. I don't want it coming out. But um, I'm gonna put it in just just so I can hold the shaft in place. I remind you, this is left-handed thread. So if you spend 15, 20 minutes trying to break it off, you know why. That's something that Jeffrey would do. If 
you guys don't know Jeffrey, just watch the Shallow Water Adventures. All right. New bearings. You guys notice, um, you can get the camera close. The first part is going to slide really easy, and that's made for that because we want the bearings to get in place. And then we go with the tool again. Now, if you don't have, on this, in this particular case, if you don't have this tool right here, um, I guess you can use a deep one inch socket if you wanted to. Just have to make sure that you hit the inner race, not the outside, because that will damage the bearing. Just hit the inner race. Before I do that, I almost forgot. Okay, so as you can see, I went in what about a half an inch after the groove for that um, snap ring. I'm going to remove the cap. I will tell you why. see that that play we normally like it here at the factory at anywhere from two to four thousandths of an inch this is the, the play that this is about three eighths of an inch obviously not good what does that mean that we have to put those those bearings they have to go back they have to go in a little bit more. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I heard it. It, it when you're hitting something, it changes the the way it sounds. That's how you can tell when it bottom okay so I think we got it all the way in just gonna make sure we loosen that up if you don't feel any play grab your hammer again then you tap it once or twice and then you'll feel the play Obviously, you guys on, on that side are not going to be able to see it. But uh, if you go back and forth like this, 
and it, it'll, you will feel it. Okay, so. Pushing time, again, this pushing is is what's gonna hold everything in place and it's where your seal is gonna ru run. Um, make sure there is no dirt or anything. This is really, this is the, just like the bearings, there is no direction, specific direction that you, you can put it this way, you can put it that way, it really doesn't matter. So you guys can hear when you're hitting it you can hear when you have hit bottom because it changes the sound okay so we have the new seal one more thing that uh that we want that i like to make sure there is no, there's no dirt now this tool there's a whole lot of different ways that you guys can install a seal uh, this one, this is the tool that we use here in the factory. Do you guys, um, I'm sure you guys know a whole thousand other ways to put them on using the old one, use a socket. Um, but this is how I'm gonna do it right here. I like to use, like I said, a tiny bit of grease just on the lid. And that is just because the first time that is gonna spin, it's not gonna spin dry. So I like to start it just a tiny bit. All the way up. Last but not least, and very important, it's gonna be my snap ring. Use the same tool. And that's it. Now, um, just make sure that this is tight as well. Um, is there a specific torque on this? Not really. side as you can get it it is made so it, it'll it, it cannot spin out by itself um, and that's pretty much it I mean after that you you put your um, your sprocket back on like I said check the video down in the, down below how to replace the sprocket um, down in the comments, I'm going to put the description and where you can get the grease that go, that's going to go in here. And after greasing it, uh, clean up. Obviously, you want to clean up all this part because this is what's going to seal against the motion base with the belt housing. Um, and that's it. I mean, that's pretty much it. We are done rebuilding this 170 hour drive lower unit or I've food. Thank you guys for watching. Be safe and we'll see you out there.